it's okay. <laughs> All right. So it says we are now streaming live. So I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Stowe Arts Commission, Tuesday, 12, uh, December 1st, 220, 2020, doggone it. It's 6.33 and welcome to everyone. Um, it looks like we have quorum. This is like a, it's a really nice showing here tonight. Do, um, Deb, can I do both at the same time or do I have to do one at a time? You can do both at the same time if that's okay with everybody. All right, so um, do we have a motion to approve minutes from October 6th meeting and the November 4th meeting? I think, who was that? Uh, Kristen. Kristen, says, Kristen, you're muted. <laughs> She's like, that's a lot of work. And second. Tom, second. Second. Thank you. So, uh, there we go. Any discussion? Do we vote? Like, yeah. uh, you everybody, know. like, raise, how about hands if you agree to approve? I agree. I see all hands. Well, yeah, they're good. I was going to say, I saw one hand down. I was going to question that, but all right. Looks like all hands were up. So, those uh, minutes have been approved. Um, this is a time where we have for public comments. <laughs> I just had one person um i gotta find it sorry tammy um tammy menke from the historical society asked me to pass on uh her email says it's starting to look like december now as far as tonight's meeting i hadn't planned to say anything chris knows the historical society will remove hang and dry the decorations after january 3rd put them in the bins we have marked for each museum Thanks, Tammy. And again, that's from Tammy Menke of the Stowe Historical Society. And that's all I have. All right. Um, well, uh, we are going then to old business. Um, the flag display. Uh, is that you, Tom? Yeah, I'll take. I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it really was a, a successful uh, project. And I was telling either, I think John or De I, I forget, I was telling several people when I took all the flags down, the, the coolest thing I think that, that impressed me was a number of people, community people had put flags in and they attached little things to the flag, like a heart shaped cutout or alt wood uh, or, a, or a flag shaped cutout with the name of a service person male or female, when they served, what war it was, what, or, or when they were simply on it. And little by little, as I'm taking these out, I'm, I'm learning a lot about how many people from Stowe, obviously, uh, were involved in, in the service. And so I left those on there because I thought we'll be putting them back out in the spring up at the safety center. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, it, was, it was just a neat thing. And I took them to City Hall and Deb and somebody stored them down in the mayor's storage area. So all taken care of. And thank you both, uh, or just you for doing that. I know um, you may have had some help from Bill, I'm not sure, but thank you for, for taking care of that. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll tell you one, one, little other, one other little thing. Uh, we had them up, of course, at the time of the election. And there was a man, John, help me out, John Probonik, help me out. What, what was he doing there? Dancing. Just dancing. Anyway, yeah. there was a man down there by the sentry statue, by the flag garden, who was there for several, somebody said five hours. Oh, yeah. On election, was it? Okay. Five hours on election day that I was, I was, I, I vote at the city hall. So I was going to go down to make sure that flags weren't on the ground. Every flag was fine because he, this dancing man, had picked them all up, or not all, if, if any had fallen or whatever, straightened them all, made sure they were there. And I, I thought, well, what a nice guy. I don't know what he was doing there besides dancing, but he fixed any flags. So thanks to him too. He, he got a lot of attention, a lot of people to vote that day, I think, Tom. He was... Very yeah. entertaining. People yeah. talked about this for a couple of weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. As I say, I went to fix flags, and I didn't have to do a thing. 
So mm -hmm. it was a good it was a good project, and we will pick it up in the spring whenever this commission feels the time is right to uh, replant them. But we're going to do it up at the state at the safety center. Yeah, Deb. Actually, um, just today, Mayor Pravonik and I were talking about that. And because it went so well, and because the flags look so nice out on that corner, we thought um, it's up to you guys, of course, because it's your project. But we were wondering if you might be interested in um, returning them out to the 91 Graham Road corner before Memorial Day. They don't, um, Rotary doesn't plant the flowers out there until um, I believe it's Memorial Day weekend or the weekend after Memorial Day. And this year Memorial Day is like May 31st. It's very late in May. So we thought maybe like the first part of May or whenever you guys decide we could put them back out there. And then when the, um, after Memorial Day, take them down so they can plant the flowers and then put them back out on that same corner again um, in the fall. In the fall. Yeah. And in, in between, if you want to see if we can put them at the safety building, I mean, that's it's up to you guys. But well, we I'll tell you what, it was very well received, everyone. I can tell you, it um, yeah, it, it really was. It was, it was, I got a lot of great comments from uh residents. Oh, and me, I feel like if it's out there where people see it, it might grow more. Well, sure, I, I think it would. Oh, and again, oh, yeah. you know, it, it would be easy to. to uh, for the for the community for the public to see oh yeah this is that thing we wanted to do we forgot to do yeah. last year but we'll do it this year you know that yeah. kind of thing so it it, do, it doesn't matter to me it's whatever the commission would like we'll do it that way whatever want, people want yeah so whatever we'll, you guys decide so we'll i can talk put about it on it. the we'll, agenda we can for decide in the spring yeah 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 i can put, put it on, it on the agenda march or april's agenda yeah okay yeah Wait, wouldn't April be a little late? March or April, if we're going to put them out early May. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to plan other than to put it out and then get a social media post going again. Although, I do want to say one thing. What? I was amazed at how hard that ground was. It was not easy putting those flags in. It really wasn't. And I put about 50 in myself. And I thought, shouldn't this be nicely tilled? And, 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 you know, when they pulled all the flowers out, I thought it would. But it was strangely, not, not everywhere, but in many parts of it. I, so I will ask for it to be well tilled. Yeah, because that has flowers every year. I don't know why it would be so. Yeah, well, this is, well remember, we pulled the flowers out to put the flags in. Right. But still, if it's dirt that's had planting in it, you would you'd think. You'd think, you'd think, but I <laughs> thought, what the heck? <laughs> I, I, but I managed. I got them all down there. <laughs> okay. Um, our next item on our agenda is the holiday coloring contest. And Deb? Oh, okay. Um, oh, so wait, 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 Deb, hang on a second. Yeah. Ed, did you have something that you wanted to add? Yeah, we're under the public comments. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, we're under the public comments. Uh, in, in, in view of what we were just discussing about the veterans, and a few of us from the uh, Republican Center that we, we manned in Hudson are sending uh, gift boxes and cards to our service men and women uh, active duty. And uh, one of the things they ask for is something from the local community. We're doing Stowe, Hudson, and surrounding area like Peninsula, Northampton. Anyway, um, if maybe the mayor could uh, take a picture of himself in front of the doughboy or something uh, to give us uh, some pictures to put in from home. And the second thing is, if, uh, if we're going to have a news release go out, uh, anybody that has active duty service men or women serving, whether they're stateside or overseas, if they'll send us their names and addresses, we'll see that they get a, a, a card and some information. If they're overseas, they'll get a gift box. Now, this isn't necessarily for this commission to do. We're already doing it. But to tie it into Stowe, 
uh, they, they asked about uh, something local that we could send. And I thought maybe if the mayor had some pictures or something that we could send over. Sure, Deb and I can come up with something. That's fine. When do you need a buy, Ed? Uh, the sooner the better, but by the 10th. Okay. How many of whatever do you need? Well, if it's just a photograph, we can make copies. Okay. That, you know. Okay. We're, we're looking to send, we'll probably have uh, 10 or 20 from Stowe. So if it's just a photograph, a small print, just go ahead and print up 10 or 20 of them and we'll see that they get out. Okay. But the main thing is if people have men and women in the service, if they can get me their information, we'll see that they're on the list. Okay. Okay. All right, Deb, back to you. Okay, um, and I want to interject one thing before I talk about the coloring contest. I forgot to put it on the agenda, I'm sorry. Um, the window painting event, um, when Sherry and I went out to the landing in Stowe to remove the paint that was on the windows, one thing uh, that we noticed at least out there. And I know it was basically, uh, there were a couple groups that I know had a lot of students or younger kids and the windows were painted like from the very edge to edge, totally completely covered. And we had a hard time getting the paint off of without damaging the caulking and that tr trim that goes around the window, the metal trim or plastic, whatever it is. So we felt like um, next time we do something like that, we need to have uh, the windows taped off so that they can't get quite so close. Like yeah. use that um, painter's tape or something sure. around the edge. And I don't know if any of the rest of you had that problem that went out to clean the windows. Um, they looked these, in. these were painted like to the total complete window was plastered with paint. So we had a really rough time getting it off. We worked for just the front of that building. I think it was four windows that were painted, maybe only three. And I think we spent an hour yeah. on those. Yeah. Wasn't it, Sherry? Yeah, I think it was like an hour and a half, two hours, something like that on three or four windows. <laughs> and it was in the hot sun and... <laughs> But so we just thought we wanted to make sure and mention that so it gets documented. So next time it's just an, a little step to add. Right. So De we did the Briarwood and yes. they had those enormous picture windows out front coated yeah. top to bottom. And some yeah. of the paint was actually thick. But I will go back and say again. So we, we started in the morning. Um, we left because of the sunshine. We waited until it wasn't in direct sun came back and the crud cutter really did help. So between crud cutter, razor knife, and a lot of, and then we had to go back and clean the windows. Of, yeah. yeah we, we had sore arms. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> the, between, we each worked three or four hours. So we were there for like six to eight hours worth of work. It was yeah, a so I, I feel like next time maybe tell them not to paint edge to edge and to go a little bit lighter on the paint. Denise? Um, yes. Um, I don't know how to exactly ask this politely, but in the instructions for those people who wanted to do the windows, the, the instructions were clear that they were expected to go clean them. We, we did change that at our meeting. We had discussed it. Oh. Um, and we felt that, I think someone pointed out that if we were asking the artist to clean it off, it might discourage them from going back next year because it was difficult. So I know like Deb was buying, I think, paint thinner. We went with the, the crud cutter route and we just wanted to do that for them. Like that was a volunteerism on our part. We volunteered to do it to keep the interest going. So well, um, I, I get that, but I would still include it in the in the directions, uh, I mean, I have it in there simply because, simply because. <laughs> yeah, we just decided to, I think it was uh, Alana that had been out to clean off and she said the paint came off m with much more difficulty than we anticipated. I mean, the instructions that 
that I put out there and what we uh, thought was that it would come off pretty easy. Uh, it did not. Did you, so, you think that's that That's why when we realized we were going to have to use uh, some chemical help, we just didn't want kids trying to do it. Yeah, I see. I see. The, and having the, to go buy it. So that's the, why we did that. If the windows were clean first, or if they were uh, had any type of work like that done in advance, do you think that would make any difference? Everybody shaking their head no. I don't I, think so. I mean, it's just the kind of paint. So I mean, we had the paint that wouldn't have washed off in a storm. However, it wouldn't wash off just by looking at it either. I mean, it was <laughs> it took it took some effort. Um, I mean, like one of the things we could possibly say is next time limit yours to two by two or three by three. Oh, or yeah. Right. Because yeah. like right. those windows at the Briarwood, those were like five feet tall and I don't know, eight feet wide in some case. It felt like eight feet. I'm not sure how big they are. They're big. They were big. And they were completely covered top. I mean, they were beautiful. And people, you know, walking in and out were uh, discussing how much they loved it. So, yeah. Um, Layla. Yeah. So um, I would suggest if we do it in future to maybe have an area taped off that they would like the painting in. Yeah. Like they could do it on the inside of the window or just do it with painter's tape on the outside. But um, cleaning the window beforehand wouldn't help because when I did the library window, I actually cleaned the window before I painted it. And it was the same, the same issues. But I mean, that's the thing with acrylic paint. When you paint on windows after after it's dried, it's not going to come off with soap and water. Which so. is kind of what we wanted to, to have it stay on through all the rain. Yeah. And it yeah. did great. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that that's all I wanted to bring up with that, just to get it down in the notes so we don't forget next time. So anybody else have something about that? Or can I go on to the coloring contest? Okay, the coloring contest, we were going to look at all the um, entries tonight. That's why I was hoping to meet in person, but we obviously can't. So we had 28 kids uh, turn in colored pictures to us. I did scan and I have them all that I can share with you if you want to at least see them. You guys need to decide um, I spoke to the mayor about this today too, because I feel like with only 28, um, I have certificates that I'm gonna, I will mail to each child that participated or each student, I should say, that participated. And um, also a Dairy Queen coupon for a free cupcake. And so I don't know if that, if you feel like that's enough and we don't need to say, oh, this one won first place, this is second, this is third. Um, that's up to you guys because it's your project. So you can talk about that and let me know if you want me to share my screen so you can see all the beautiful paintings or they're not paintings, they're colored. So could you remind me again, Deb, what did, how did we say, like what, you know, we want a winner, how did we, uh, let me look. That. It said all completed pictures were to be turned in by last Wednesday. All entries to be colored with crayons or colored pencils only. Um, it was for kindergarten through sixth grade and it was advertised as uh, the city of Stowe and the Stowe Arts Commission present the 2020 holiday coloring contest. So we did use the word contest. We, but did. we didn't say we but we didn't say that there would be any certain prizes or first place, second place, third place. No. I think so, in that regard, you can I think in that regard what you had suggested is fine. I, I, I think that's appropriate. Just the certificate and the yeah. coupon for a Dairy Queen treat. I mean, I think that's pretty great, actually. I don't know yeah. a lot of people giving out free cupcakes yeah. a lot of places, you know. What I mean right. I'll tell you what, Dairy Queen is excellent. Anything I go and ask them for to support our community, they do it. And this was another one that they did. They said, sure, not a problem. Tell us how many you need. And they did it. So. Oh, yeah. Like they give the library tons of stuff every yeah. year. Yeah. They, yes, yes, absolutely. And then we are, I am going to hang all of them at City Hall um, wherever wherever I can so that the public can see them when they come in. 
but there's there they range from age uh the oldest is 11 and 12 year olds and then there was actually a uh, one done by a three-year-old that i think had a sibling doing it and they turned one in too so well all right i'll, I'll defer to the teachers who have little ones denise uh uh, would, would it be all right if, if on this, this certificate that you, that you develop and, and, you know, I would like, I would like every certificate to say you're a winner. It doesn't have to be the winner, but you're a winner. Um, congratulations, whatever. Is that, is that okay? Is that kind of thing okay? If you're deferring to me, I, I, I was. Nice it. Um, I just think it, Deb, were there any that when you guys looked at them, you went, whoa, that's a standout. Like it, it might be nice to take one or two, um, put them in a little post of some sort on Facebook, um, share them around a little bit so they don't have to be the winner even then. But if there were some standouts and like in uniqueness maybe, or whatever, um, it would be nice if just to keep it going for, for spirit or even put them out like a bunch of them randomly, you know, we, so, we could actually put them all out, um, we could do that. redacting the names and whatever we can put those out because we've done it, uh, when we've done like the 4th of July parade and we had all those photographs and people really did look at them. So yeah, we can do that. It's just the only thing would be redacting the name and so forth, which isn't a problem. Kimmy. Could we make like a slideshow of them to put on social media? Just because I imagine every kid would be tickled to see yeah. there. Right. And this would encourage people to participate next year or for whatever next contest we do. So John, I'm almost thinking like, do we actually have to redact the names? I mean, if you were, if they were trying to win an, an award, aren't they putting, I mean, like if they were the winner, would they not want to be named? I mean, isn't it sort of implied that yeah, I guess we're displaying in the city hall. So yeah, I don't I don't see a problem unless the rest of you see it. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think some people have different expectations regarding name sharing on social media. Yeah, uh, unless, yeah. unless people gave prior permission or right. there was explicit expectations, if you were going to do it, I would take them out. At the yeah. library, we're, we'd like to be very careful about that. There are a lot of people who don't want their children's names on the internet. Yeah, I, no, I I'm just afraid I online. I'm just afraid online is what it is. I agree. Yeah. I wouldn't put the names out there without Can you see my screen? I, yes. 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 Yeah. Okay, so that's the certificate that was designed for them. And I printed them all on bright paper. Some are blue, some are red, some are green. And um, they all, they came out really nice. They're very cute for the kids. Yeah, so, I like that. I like, I like that. that. Yeah, it looks great. good. Okay. And then. If, we, uh, if we called it a contest, I feel like we should choose a couple winners, maybe like by age or ones that like Denise said, well, that, that, that's it, a good, it was that's obvious a that someone really you know, put a lot of effort into it or something. But that's if we called it a contest, I feel like we should acknowledge a couple winners from it this is the three-year-old so which really yep. <laughs> wasn't even included but i i had to show you guys that one well, well yeah. now wait a so, minute didn't you, didn't you say that an older sibling probably did that an older sibling had one that she entered and oh. so i think the little kid just did it for fun well this is the it, three to ten year olds i actually agree with sarah that if the, the word contest implies a winner me too. Well, that's what I was going to say, because, but, well. I mean, I mean, it's fine to have winners. I just, I think, like, I think I, I would expedite it, is what I mean. Like, I think that, like, the, mayor, the mayor's office can just, like, choose, like, first, second, third. I don't have to. Oh, I don't think no, 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 no. No, yeah. no, no. Put it on John. Oh. Put it on John. Uh, no, no, no. Whether, Tom well, Stephan you know or somebody I, I else think... can stop in and, and do that. <laughs> No, How about no. if I, do you are want a to, couple of? Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say, do you want to email it to us, and then whoever replies by tonight, like that's who chooses the winners. I think that's a good idea, Sarah. I like that. And then, like, if one person replies, yeah. then that's the person that chose the winners. <laughs> there you go. It's easy. Give us well, till noon. Give us till noon tomorrow or something. Okay. Yeah. That's and fine. what 
And what you need to decide then are the age category winners. I have these clumped. Uh, the, it seemed like the uh, they were all pretty much very close to the same level. Uh, the three-year-old being outside of the box, mm -hmm. but the five to 10-year-olds were kind of the same. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. the 11 and 12-year-olds were kind of the same. Yeah, but that's good. Fine. Yeah, it seems like uh, that's sort of elementary and then like middle. I mean, like this one, look at the windows in the clock tower. I like yeah. how they show on the banner. Oh, that's good. So what if yeah. we just have under five, five to 10, and then 10 plus for three categories? Yeah, I agree. All right, well, I'll like email all these to you guys after the okay. meeting. So do so you have them three? by category? How will we know? Will they be by category? How will we know? Uh, I might have to do this tomorrow then from work because I just have them ages three to 10 and 11 to 12. And I think, what did you say, Carrie? Under three? I mean, I said under five, but it really doesn't matter if everyone thinks that. I, I was just wondering if the three-year-olds really grouped in with up to 10-year-olds, then. I honestly matter. think there was only the one three-year-old. Let me, I brought them home with me. Just so yeah, but tell. I would think but, still a five-year-old's going to be nowhere near as good as a 10-year-old at coloring, right? It is there was only the one three-year-old. And I, again, I think it was done because a sibling did it. And she'll still get a Dairy Queen coupon, so. Heck yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I think that's fine. The three to 10 and then 11 and 12, I think. Are we choosing yeah, like three winners from each or are we choosing one winner from each? I think let's do one winner from each. I mean, like we, we could drill down like really far on this. I don't think we need to. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So uh, three to 10 and 11 to 12, one winner each. Yep. Yeah. So okay. you're only talking about two winners, period. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's all right. Everybody's winning a cupcake. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're all they're all getting the same prize. They just don't know it, Tom. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> there you go. Oh, but you know, kids, they'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, life's not fair, is it? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm I'm all for that. I, I that's okay. <laughs> so when I've done like things like this, where we are all submitting separately our choices, we've always we do like the top three, and then whoever is aggregating the data has like then you just choose the one that was the most popular among everybody. Because I don't think we're all going to choose the same one thing. Does that so whoever gets the most votes is what you're saying? Yeah, like if yeah. everybody sends you their top three and you choose, you take the one that had the most. Okay. So everybody send me your top three out of each category and I'll figure it out. And if I have trouble, I'm going to call Sarah. <laughs> Woo! Uh -huh. John can be the tiebreaker. No. no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> and then we will hang them all at City Hall. And um, do you want them put out on social media without names, just to show what was done? Maybe the winners. No, I should put them all out. I think that's really neat. People like to see those. Yeah, I put them all out. Just take their names off. Yeah, their, their names are on the back side on most of them, except okay. a, a couple put their name on the banner. Which it's just the first name, so I don't yeah, think it just says like Joe or something like that. Yeah. You know who cares? I think it just says Joshua. Yeah. Okay. okay. I say Deb. Yeah. Uh, some of those pictures would be perfect to include in the box for our service men and women. Oh, oh yeah, it would be. It would. Yeah. Because it it gives the uh, the monument and the uh, city building and. City Hall and the clock That's tower. That's a good idea, Ed. Well, Ed, um, how many do you want? And I'll, I'll scan them in color and then I can print them for you. There you go. About about 10 or 20, maybe maybe two of each. Okay. Something like that. Okay. Got it. Do you want me to let you know when we have all these things ready and you'll pick them up or do you want yeah, to Yeah, just call me when they're ready. I'll pick them up. Okay. 
That's a neat idea. Ed. That's Very a nice. great idea. I love it. And Maybe. if Walt will get it, we'll get it on Facebook. I think that's yeah. great. Okay. All righty then. Uh, next on our agenda, the Heritage Reserve Park Colonial Holiday Decorating and Drive Through Event. <laughs> that's a mouthful. Sarah's muted. Um, I not sure really what to say. We ended up having to cancel the event or postpone it until 2021. Um, because of COVID, we made the decision most of our, or a large portion of our volunteers for the event are in the higher risk category. Um, and we just didn't want to take any chances with, um, you know, the county's numbers being so high. So we decided to postpone again until next holiday season, the drive through event. Um, but we did still decorate and I think it looks great and we still will have the lights on for people to drive through. It just isn't the one evening event. Yeah, so. And Deb, yeah. can I share with them um, the brochures that we had printed up? Oh, we yeah, had three, I mean, yeah. We had 300 of the brochures printed up. So our Santa's workshop that uh, was scheduled as an event for this coming Sunday, we had to turn it into a drive-through. So the kids will drive through and we're gonna put one of those brochures in everybody's bag. And we're gonna put one of the coloring pages that were made for that event as well. We actually started, we have about half of them already made in the office today, we put them together. So people will still get the brochures. They were beautiful, um, informative, and you know, if we can share them with them and then this way they might come back and drive through at a later date as well. So thank you for putting them together. They were, they were really pretty. Um, and Kimmy, the coloring page was really good too. Yeah. And those Michelle brochures and did come out really nice and we have, uh, the mayor was able to get a uh, brochure stand that like what realtors use in front of a house that's for sale. And we're going to put some out at the park. So when people are out there looking, they can take a, take one out. It's a covered holder and that way they can learn about the houses too. Yeah, that's a good so idea. I'd really like to say thank you to Michelle. Uh, you did an excellent job setting that program up. Uh, Larry Long contributed a lot, but Michelle, you did an excellent job and it, it, it's a beautiful brochure. So at least it's going to be put to good use. It's going to get in people's hands. It came out really nice. Even the printer said how gorgeous that brochure was. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, Deb, I saw your hand up. Did you have something else to add? I just wanted to add about the realtor brochure holder <clears throat> okay so um i thought there was lots of great work on that and it was amazing and i think the good news is is that next year it's almost like a footprint and all you have to do is kind of follow through um so like all of that hard work sarah thank you for that and um like i said i think it's just a great you've already got it kind of set up and it's we'll just be ready to go next year so that's kind of work done ahead of time Anything else on that? No, but we still will, according to plan right now, we still will light that on Saturday evening, and then that will stay until January 4th lit up. So the guys have just a couple more finishing touches. The luminaries still have to go up, and I think a couple spotlights, and uh, I think it'll look very nice so people will be able to enjoy that, though. So thank you. All right, so um, next on our agenda, updates for on other projects. We have three that were tabled until January of 2021, so at the next meeting. Um, there will be the public art follow-up, uh, which is traffic signal boxes, the Art Walk 2021, and Garden Walk 2021. So those will all come up on the next agenda. Um, then we have new business. We have art show, um, Alana and Layla. Yeah, Alana's was like, whoa, no, what? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm looking at the agenda too. Um, yeah, we were actually, um, we had the idea that it would be really nice to have a citywide celebration of women artists and um, choosing the month of March because it is Women's History Month. 
Um, so finding different venues that would be able to be home to different sculptures and paintings and performing arts, if we can find a way to make that work. Um, I'm not sure if that's gonna be something that we would be able to do, but really having a full-blown citywide celebration of women in the arts. Explain to some, uh, some of the pieces, both you and Layla, uh, of, of what you were thinking when you made your presentation towards me, because it really is, it's neat. It really is cool. And where you'd like to display this. Okay. Layla, do you wanna? I wanna let you take it. <laughs> oh, okay, great. <laughs> Um, well, we have a proposal for a sculpture series that is um, three pieces and it's representing women from the past, present and future and um, the women of the past. And I have asked um, Carrie to be my model for this um, and she has graciously accepted. <laughs> so we're hoping to have her uh, be a suffragette holding a sign and the sign will actually have moving pieces that um, spin around that are headlines and um, uh, protest uh, posters and newspaper articles from the time when women were actually getting the right to vote. And then um, for the piece for the present, it is a weather vane and it's a woman standing facing into the storm. Um, quite literally, as the wind blows, she will always be facing into the wind. And then for the future, a woman, and this will actually have um, community involvement, would be a woman blowing petals away from her and they will be moving on a um, pinwheel type axis. And each petal will have a wish that um, people in the community have for women for the future. So each sculpture will be life size and each one will be moving and we're hoping to display them in that nice field that's right in front of City Hall or behind City Hall. So lots of sculptures like that. We were also thinking that it might be a nice time to showcase um, a nice mural by Kimmy on a wall somewhere and uh, really reaching out to lots of other female artists in the community and making sure that um, they're, they're just, they're being seen, being heard. I love it. I think it's amazing. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, community yeah, sounds involvement good. with it too, with regards to businesses that are willing to display the art. Um, I have spoken to a couple of local businesses that would definitely be interested. Um, and I'm pretty sure between everyone here we know a lot of local artists and the question is just whether we want to include artists female artists from Stowe or from neighboring cities as well um you know we've got a lot of contacts with who to involve and who to ask for more artists names and stuff and between the few people here I think we know quite a lot of female artists within Stowe as well um the other thing that we were thinking about is to maybe approach certain people within the community that would be willing to help sponsor um, artists that want to create something, but don't necessarily have the revenue to buy the, the materials. So that was, that was our pitch to the mayor and he seemed really interested in it. So. <laughs> Um, with that, we would, we would be, as long as it's something that everybody approves and is on board with, we would need to get a call to artists out and really um, realistically very soon. Like I, I will, uh, I have a mock-up of what needs to be on it and could send it over by noon tomorrow because it needs to, a call to artists needs to be out really soon because they're going to need time to make proposals um, and then make the work for it to be up by March 1st. Cause that's- I like the idea. Yeah, go and for if it. If you think you can, if you can get enough from just Stowe, I would do it that way. Yeah. 
how many artists would we ideally like to have? I guess it would depend on how many places we can have to display, but. Well, well if it's just like a painting or something, couldn't one place display multiple? Mm -hmm. Or they could have one of each media, a small sculpture and a painting or whatever. I would think some locations might be able to display more than one. Yeah. I mean, if we're doing visual arts too, we could um, we could approach places like um, Beef O'Brady's with their screens and we could have a recording of the visual arts and just have them dedicate one screen to visual arts. Yeah. Belshinos uh, has the screen too. There we go. Hey, Layla. So any, yes. Hey, I don't know if you know, but um, the library has like a big gallery wall on the first floor by the magazines. You might want to contact our director, Gail, and see if okay. we could we could set something up because I'm sure she'd like to do it. Yeah. Okay. We can do that. Cool. That's a good idea. I'm wondering if businesses would like to be part of this so and then maybe put together some sort of a pamphlet, you know, like... Um, pub crawl kind of thing where you're going yeah. you know from from location to location you know checking out the different arts um and it would create foot traffic to businesses too right yeah oh, that'd be pretty idea. fun actually you could get yeah. like little um things you could stamp to like when you go on those bar crawls yeah. <laughs> but it's like an art crawl no, i think that would be really fun hey we could get a local baker to make some cookies or something yeah yeah, you know make it cool well, we can do that i mean that's no problem we can we can come up with some local things that we could give away yeah. to but that's no problem um alana and lena you were talking about getting this out to the artists obviously it should be done this month for an event yeah. that's in march yes. but do they have to submit and will you either accept or reject their idea um, I feel like they'd have to submit an idea just so that we can make sure that there isn't anything that is uh, questionable. Right. right. Um, yeah. So when I was looking at writing up the um, call to artists, um, they would need to include a description of the proposal, including their medium and how big, like the dimensions of the actual piece. And um, I mean, if it's a if it's a performance piece, well, then we're going to need to know we need to know that so that we can figure out how we could facilitate um, and then images of what they are along with the written description of what they are proposing um, just to see it because you know you don't want to pair them if we know that we have venues we don't want to put something graphic where children might see it so those are things to consider for sure I, I was just curious if it will be a We'll take anything, <laughs> but I agree with Bill. I think if possible, I think it should be women of Stowe. I think it should be women artists of Stowe, but if you don't get much return, then you can right. maybe, maybe open it up. I mean, I've already got a couple of confirmations from a few Kim, women in Stowe. Kimmy, Kimmy can't do it all. <laughs> Do you guys know how much do you think you're looking for? Are you looking for like five, 10, 30? Like I'm, I'm trying to understand what the goal is. I kind of feel like the more the merrier. There are a lot of um, artists within Stowe that don't know how to get their art out there. Um, they, they don't know that they can go, for, for instance, go to Corner Cup and just request to submit stuff and who to speak to and that kind of thing. Um, you know, it's, I think it's more of a way to facilitate some way of helping people to get their art noticed and to get their names out there. And because there are so many people living in Stowe and so many that are actually artists that nobody knows about because they don't know where, where to display. They don't know what, how to, you know? So I think, I think as many as possible um, obviously, depending on how many businesses are willing to participate and how many spaces we have available and size of space, et cetera. Right. So will this be more obvious about what kind of people participating compared to how many people will display? I, bet so you I, call to I didn't hear the beginning part. <laughs> oh, me? I was saying I bet it will be more about how many people you can get to submit and participate. I'm sure you could find enough establishments that would want to yeah yeah 
Yeah, I would think so too. I do too, yeah. So with your call to artists, are you gonna put, I mean, so the idea with Layla was that we wanna see if we can get some people financial backing. Is that mm -hmm. in any way going to be included on the call to artists? Cause like some people might not even respond without that. That is definitely something to be considered um, how we approach. Um, I have, just because I tried to get a very light mock-up of what it might say, um, that it would re be reviewed by a committee and um, to be partnered with a um, participating venue, consideration would be taken for artist preference, but cannot be guaranteed. And that, um, that we would be trying to work with people who would need financial assistance. So we would let them know that we will try to help them um, if they need help with getting that, because I, I, don't, I don't want people to think, well, I can't afford to do it, which a lot of people you know, need to get paid to do their work. Um, in some Especially in the arts. Yeah. Right. We had discussed a couple of names that we could um, have meetings with to establish whether we can have some sort of budget. Um, we're hoping to get that meeting done within this week so that we can, so that we know what, what number we're looking at um, for assistance. So. Can we, well, I do know just from personal research, when it comes to applying for grants, whether it's from the state or whatnot, if a specific project is in mind from a city, it's easier to get funding for that kind of stuff rather than an artist trying to get their own grant. If you have a specific project where you're offering it to your local, the city can apply for a grant to help cover yeah. the stipend. Artists. Yeah, um, I've already given the mayor um, Nicole Mullet's email address, and yeah. she can direct him to where the city can actually apply for a grant for public art, which right. this would apply to, but I'm not sure when their next grant would be. I don't think that we'll be able to get it this year, but he'd be able to apply for it for next year. Yeah. All right, so I certainly haven't heard anyone who disagreed that this is an amazing idea and opportunity. Um, what would you need from the Arts Commission? Um, would that be, um, you know, they're gonna help judge the entries? Um, how, what do you need from the Art Commission? Uh, well, firstly, I think we need you to say yes. <laughs> um, I don't think that this would be like a competition. This would just be like a showcase. Like we want to show how many amazing artists we have in Stowe and this would be a female only show this time because it ties in with Women's History Month. Um, but it might be a nice first kind of thing and then we can build on that in the future if we wanted to include every artist in Stowe, if we wanted to do something with children or just adults or whatever. But um, as far as what we need from the art commission right now is just basically the the okay to go ahead and i think in future probably help with installation mm. i don't know if you have anything else to add alana i'll just say on that note do we need a motion like because if so then i move to accept their proposal and do the spring art show second all in favor aye <laughs> All opposed? Um, did you want to discuss that, Ed, or did you just want to say you're opposed, or did you want to have a discussion? He's muted. He doesn't even, I'm not sure he can hear me. No, I'm in favor of it. I was oh. raised in my hand yet saying yes. Oh, okay. You were just delayed. Oh. Okay, I was like, oh, we can, you know, there could be some discussion. Um, and by the way, Layla, I didn't actually mean as a judge per se, like as in a contest, but like, is this yeah. appropriate? Is this not appropriate sort of thing? If you need help in that area, I'm sure that you could bring that to the commission for discussion. Yeah. So I think that would be, if we could um, have more than just myself and Alana choosing who, with what's appropriate, it might be better if it's like a whole board of people choosing because then there's less and as soon as you know complaining 
and when you know how many you have, if you need help finding display places, I think some of us can help okay. in that vein yeah. too. Okay. Well, I know that um, Corner Cup has definitely said that they would be interested in yeah. displaying art. Um, that could possibly be as well as their monthly artist spot. Um, and then I know Miraki Studio, the piercing place, would also be willing to display the art for definite and then the library. Yeah. She said, I need to be ready to go when this is over. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's ready to go. <laughs> Somebody's ready to go. Yeah, they're going. All right. So I'm assuming this will be on um, the agenda for next month with any kind of updates or help that you might need. Um, yep. All right. Anything else? Um, I have Our one more thing for the holiday, the lights, the historical thing. I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to Alana and Layla for doing the cutouts. I realized I didn't, I know we talked about it at the last meeting, but um, I have not been back over there to see them installed, but I saw the preview of them and they're amazing. And I just like really appreciate all the work that they did. Yes, Thank very you. much so. Very, very much so. They're, they're beautiful. Um, Jeff DeKuliak. Yes, sir. We've seen each other on Thanksgiving. You look a little bit different without your turkey hat on. I'm um, fully recuperated we, too at this point. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, Jeff, uh, he's a lot younger than me and ran a lot farther, I'll tell you that. So even with a turkey outfit on. Anyways, could you bring up your idea that we talked about uh, shortly uh, as we're standing in the cul-de-sac? Yeah, so I, I was wondering <clears throat> with the holiday drive-through lighting event going on this Thursday, are, are we could we capitalize on an opportunity to have either like a um canned food drive or toys for tots drive or some type of donation event as people are driving through or walking through the stove property to look at lights it would there be a way to do a collection um and either get that to the either bulldog bags or the akron food bank or something of that nature and and i don't know what it would take to staff that up to have somebody there to collect how you where you would put it at um, I know it's a little late in the game, but um, with all that's going on this year, there's a lot of folks that could, could probably use an extra hand and, and capitalizing on everything that's going on at the city hall with the lighting and everything might be a good time to do, try and coordinate something with that. Deb and I talked about that today and, you know, this could run all month long. Uh, we could come up with a collection uh, bin for canned foods. Um, I guess the question is, I throw it out to everybody, who would we donate those to? Layla? So um, our scout troops just did a food drive for the Methodist church that has the food pantry and they also do the bulldog bags. What they are definitely in need of is diapers. Um, there are a lot of people that cannot afford to get to buy diapers and they rely on the, the food pantries surprisingly to supply them with diapers. Mm. Um, so you could speak to the Methodist church, um, Laura Root, one of those ladies would be able to tell you what sizes they need and how many quantities and stuff like that. Um, obviously canned food and stuff like that is also important, but I would definitely include diapers if you could. Yeah. All that personal hygiene stuff, because people can't buy that. I go to that Methodist yeah. church yeah. and we talk about that. People can't buy that personal hygiene stuff with food stamps, apparently, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, Layla, this might be a stupid question, but um, I have a lot of grandbabies right now. And I know that people pass diapers back and forth, but the boxes are sometimes opened. Would that be a no? Or would um, like I am not sure. Bill might be able to answer that. I don't know if you, you're I aware. I can't say for sure. I'd have to ask the ladies. I yeah. would think, oh, or what is it, a big box that has smaller packets inside it? Yeah. I don't I'm think not if the packet no, was sealed, sure. you might just, be okay. That, but You know, yeah. families will start a pack of diapers. Mm. Their kid will grow out of them, and then they don't want to throw them away. So I have seen exchanges between friends, families, that kind of thing. But I didn't know with a drive like this, 
Would it's a question we can ask and come back with an answer tomorrow. I, I can tell you, um, this has been Deb, you and probably Chris, what's it been five or six years ago that we sent diapers and stuff down to uh, the area where the hurricane hit. And it was amazing how many diapers we collected. Uh, but, you know, do you guys want to just do one, like one thing like diapers and, 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 and ask for those and, you know, or whatever you want to do, we can come up with a collection bin because we do have the walking path trail uh, that we, you know, brought out today on Facebook. And we could add to that saying that if you'd like to donate that, we could put it right next to the mailbox with letters to Santa. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys want to decide what you kind of would like to have donated or go from that point. Yeah, I think having a list of certain, a certain amount, certain items like diapers, personal hygiene items, I itemize them and people can just pick from the list what they want to get. But, but how do they know ahead of time, Layla? I mean, uh, well, we'd have to, okay. we'd have to have, what, what I was thinking is, I, I love the idea, and I love the idea that, you know, going to go through the, all the light walk and all that is so cool, but when you do that, drop off diapers, mm -hmm. just making it one, one yeah. big thing, or drop off condensed soup. You know, what one, one idea, well, you know, Campbell's soup, whatever. <laughs> is that, what, yeah. is that yeah. what they call it? I, I, I don't know what. Um, well, the same but, way you would put out the word that you want just one item, you can put out the word that you want one of three items. You, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, keep it, keep it. Right. I agree. You just pick three or five items. If you, I would pick more than three or five items. Yeah. 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 And, you know, we'd love to see, we'd love to see hundreds of thousands of people. And all of you, when you come through, drop off two cans of soup, drop off two packs of diapers, whatever. Yeah. But but I agree. I, I mean, I just don't think we ought to just make it willy nilly. It just, several yeah. items. It would be similar to the way that the bulldog bags do it because when they um, when people contact them for doing collections, like the junior moms, if they contact bulldog bags and say, "What do you need collected?" Yeah. They give the junior moms a list of three items that they want from them. And then they would give somebody else, another organization, a list of three, three different items that they want from them. So that right. way they don't get too many of the same item donated and they get a variety of stuff. Yeah. So I guess that would be the way to do it. But that, when does that walk start, John? It starts Thursday soon, night. doesn't it? Thursday night. Thursday night, Thursday night at 530. And it lasts yeah. all the way till January 4th. Okay. I, I mean, I don't know how we can get get this whole idea in place by Thursday. Yeah, Debbie, <laughs> Deb? I feel like it would be a good idea to, if you wanna support Bulldog Bags, we could check with Laura Root and maybe ask for the items that they're going to distribute in the month of January. And then we could collect, ask for those things. I, I don't, I didn't, I don't have that file with me. So I don't know what they're collecting, what they're giving out in January, but they already have it put together. So we could ask for those items to be donated. And if you want to, we could add on to that. Again, uh, Layla said, Laura's the connection for the Methodist church. If you want to do the diaper thing or the personal hygiene, maybe she could provide us with that information as well. Yeah. And then the mayor can work his magic and get a social media blast out tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, we could do that right away and then just start. It gives us a full month to collect things, which is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that would be more efficient than just asking for canned goods because then we have to find a place to take those canned goods. And I don't think the food bank will take just a collection of, of the canned goods they want they get quantity things not yeah. they're used to giving us little things not us giving them and i know bulldog bags i don't know if they would want those types of canned goods because all the kids bags are all the same right and I mean, then 600 of something that's not right. going to really help them so i feel like exactly if you right. want to do this at this time with such short notice i just feel like if yeah. someone contacts Laura Root and gets 
their January items or, or even February, if maybe someone's already, I mean, they plan so far ahead. I don't know, maybe they already have what they need for January and we could work on the February things. I, yeah. I just feel like that would be the best way to go. I think they have the whole year planned, don't they, Deb? Because I yeah. remember seeing an email, they had the whole yeah. year planned. Yep, they, she has it planned till the summer. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think Jeff's idea is phenomenal. It's a great um, idea. You know, we're, we're not, I'll tell you what, uh, when you see it, um, we're not charging anything and, and rightfully so to go through this, but uh, I can tell you uh, last year, even when we had just the partial thing lit up, the amount of families that came through, um, it was phenomenal. That walked actually through the, uh, the lights. And this year here, it's gonna really take your breath away. I mean, it really is double what we had last year. So it's gonna be a really beautiful thing. So I agree with Jeff, let's try to go ahead and do yeah. something great for the city, the people that are in need. Um, but I guess who, wants to reach out to Laura. I mean, I can if you want. It doesn't matter. I mean, I talk to her a lot, or Layla can, either one. If I can speak to her, too. We, um, my scout troop is actually volunteering at ACME this Saturday and handing out flyers because they're collecting um, cookie yeah. cookie kits and icing. But, I mean, I can, call her to, I can call her tonight or in the morning, if we, depending on yeah. how quickly we need to know. So that would be great because that way we can get it out like starting tomorrow, even if that's the case, and we can come up with a collection bin and all that kind of stuff. So, what am I asking though? The January or February? Are we talking bulldog bags or are we talking the food pantry at the church? What are we looking for here? That's I feel like there's a more immediate need for like the diapers and the and the you know personal hygiene items, but I mean it's it's up to everyone else too. What? Why don't you, when you talk to Laura, why don't you ask her what she thinks would be the better way to go? That's a good idea. I okay. mean, if you want to, we can always go ahead and do a month for the Bulldog bags, whatever that is, and throw diapers into that too. I mean, yeah. whatever you, you guys have. Do. So we get, they get two choices. They can either bring diapers or whatever the Bulldog bag item is. Is yeah. that what you mean? Yeah. So they have two items to pick from. Or sometimes, Bill, you've been involved with Bulldog Bags for a long time. Don't you, they usually have like two items or is it just one for the month? They have two for each month. Okay, so two items plus diapers? About yeah, we could do a personal hygiene item. What are you talking, personal hygiene or food now? When you say there's two, Deb, what do you mean? I mean, the bag you know, has on, 10 or 12 Laura, items in it. On Laura's list of what they're collecting right. each month, this right. is separate from the food that goes in the bag. They right. like, um, or uh, last month they had Rice Krispie squares and chapstick. Uh, right. And okay. Each month she's got like two things that they collect. All right. So, All right. And we will find out. It's got. It's got to be something that if it freezes doesn't matter too because these bo right. this bin will be outside, right? So let me. Either yeah. January or the February items, whatever she feels like she needs. So I hate to be devils. I like the diaper idea, Layla, but how secure is this box? How often will somebody clean it out? I mean, some di every... diapers are not an inexpensive item, but we can right. have people coming up and helping themselves to this, or how we, how do we protect we against something like every, that? Too? We could empty it every morning. I mean, that doesn't guarantee at night, okay. but there is cameras right. out there. So All right. Well, if you're going to empty it every day, that's enough. Somebody's yeah, that desperate that they get day. one day of stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they need it. They need it more than right. Okay. Yeah, that, that'd Ed, be fine. Did you have something to add? Add, Ed? Add, Ed. Ed, Ed, Ed. It's been a long day. <laughs> Ed, you had your hand up. Did you ha want to? I don't know. He might be frozen. You know, I have two. I have two pictures of him on my screen. I do Me too. too. He did have his hand up earlier, but I think that's just frozen it now. Um, well, once I talk oh, to Laura, you know. do you want me to let Deb know? Yeah. Is that what I should yeah. And then once, and once you let Deb know, Deb can send it out to the entire yeah. group. The, the, so do what we Lilla need, was, do we need to make a, okay, have what a Lilla was saying, uh,
<laughs> I think we're all kind of getting stuck. I don't know. Um, do we need to have a motion to approve this little project or do you guys, are you going to go with it? Let's I do a motion. Let, let's, well, let, yeah, I motion to do it. <laughs> I'm like, free, I'm frozen a little bit. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Is hey, there a can you hear me? Yeah, everybody's yes. like breaking can... away. <laughs> okay. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> well, what I was saying was the, the what Lola suggested on the personal hygiene item. No? God. Yeah. What? Okay, I'll, I'll pass for now. <laughs> okay. The hot spots are not as hot as they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> you must be pretty hot, Mr. Stefan. What's you must that? Be pretty hot. You must be pretty hot because you're moving around like crazy, so you're good. Yeah, I'm. Everything's everything's up to date on Linwood Drive, anyway. <laughs> I don't know. All Jeff, right. I think that's an excellent idea. So. Deb can get the information from Bill. Bill then can give it to Deb. She'll send it out to you guys. We'll work on the collection thing and we'll empty it every morning. And uh, I think it's an excellent idea. I do too. We need this to be a motion. Yeah, well, Kristen made the motion. I don't know that nobody seconded it and you didn't vote. I'll second. Uh, we have a, all right, Sherry's oh. got a second. All in favor? Yes. We got everybody that can move. <laughs> <laughs> all right Thank you. Um, oh, we, we really do have to get back to face-to-face -face meetings one of these days <laughs> this has to end someday soon That's... <sighs> all right so um just so you know it was kind of in the email this is my last meeting my two-year commission is finished oh. so um the january meeting uh will be uh you'll be electing a new chair um, I saw that there were other names on the list, so I'm not sure if this is, if there are others whose last meeting this might be. Um, uh, yeah, it's also Bill Flinta, David's not here, Lisa's not here, Rita's gone, Ginger moved, so, Bill. But the mayor was gonna, mayor, are you froze? Yes, there you. no, I'm not frozen. I, I'm cold, but I'm not frozen. Um, yes. So anyways, um, I would invite anybody who is still interested, whose term is up to uh, ask Deb for an application. And I will turn those applications, uh, the ones that uh, that are up, I think, who are they, Bill and... and Bill's else? the only one that's here, Bill and Denise. Okay. Bill and Denise. Um, but Bill was appointed by consul. Yes. Um, that's the only council one? Yes. Correct? Yes. So, Bill, if you're interested, if you can get a, if you want to go ahead and come back and reapply and whatever, um, I'd be happy. To, I, I, I'd love to have you back. Uh, it's not my decision, though. So, you'd have to turn in your application. Deb then would give it to Lori Villers, who will give it to City Council for approval, which would be at the well, December 17th. It could be December 17th if he got it in by next Wednesday. Well, give it to me. Probably not going to re-up, but I will let Deb know for sure. Okay. Sounds good. Well, we uh, appreciate all your hard work, Bill. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and I, I've worked with Bill, oh gosh, I can't <laughs> tell you how many years we always talk about this and how much yeah. uh, uh, grounding effect and, and connections you have within our community. And I truly appreciate that, Bill. Um, also to uh, Denise, fantastic job. Uh, she took the, 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 the bull by the reins right at the beginning here. Uh, you guys have accomplished so, so much. And uh, like I said, I, I, I thank you, Denise, uh, for uh, your actual very good leadership. And like I said, look forward to next year with everybody. And uh, like I said, but Bill and Denise, thank you very much for the years that you've put into this group because you really have made it. You were the founding members and you've really made it what it is today. And you've seen even today the fruits of what's coming about. And I'm very excited to see it, but 
we appreciate all your hard work. Thank you. It was, it was a great experience. Um, if it were not for hybrid teaching right now, I would probably do it. Hybrid is killing me <laughs> slowly. <laughs> so, um, Carrie, you had your hand up. Did you need anything? I just wanted to mention, and I, I think because I totally dropped the ball, I was supposed to get a, an application to Alana. So I don't know if that happened in the meantime, but if not, Deb, could you send Alana an application to join this committee? And I, because it she's has been... already happened. She's okay. already in. I have right, good, a letter written up that's going to council on the 17th before okay. anything changes. <laughs> Perfect. Because I totally forgot to do that. So Oops. no, you did send it. Oh, I did send it to you? Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. that I did send it then. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> All right. So um, anything else for the good of the cause? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Wait. Yeah. Oh, Wait. no, no, sorry. Our next meeting, uh, sorry, January 5th at yeah, 6 that's it. via Zoom. It'll be that's by Zoom. Yeah. All right. And then that's the only other thing, except um, Layla, if you could give me a call tomorrow, I would appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Now, can I do a motion to adjourn? Please. Okay. Any? Do we do we have that motion, or you guys want to stay here all night? No, so I'm I'm making it now. All right. And we got a second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Good night, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye now. Bye. Thank you. Now I can't exit. This is great. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs>